Joe. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a happy 1929, Joe. Looks like a big year. Pretty Willie's having a big Christmas tree for all the kids on the north side. We got you down for 50 bucks. 50 bucks? You want the kids to have nice presents, don't you? Look, I don't mind buying my liquor from Pretty Willie, but if he wants to play Santa Claus, he can do it on his own money. Pretty Willie wouldn't like to hear that. I'm fed up with you guys putting a bite on me. Every day it's something new. Now, you hadn't ought to have said that, Joe. We come here full of brotherly love and the spirit of Yuletide. I'm on 50 bucks to make it snappy. We got a lot of calls to make. All right. All right. Nice day for December, ain't it? All right, Frosty, why'd you do it? They were using profanity. Stop clowning. This is nothing to get funny about. You can't pin it on me. I was across the street when the whole thing happened, and I can prove it. While you were establishing your alibi, did you see anything? A long, low man in a coonskin roadster done it. I seen him with my both eyes. I took these out of the mouths of the diseased. Oh, Leonardo da Vinci's, huh? Looks like that playmate of yours is at it again. This is Ship Morrison's trademark, ain't it? Sure, that's the kind of cigars he smokes, but that don't say he done it. It says plenty to me. I've seen guys smoking these cold cigars before. What'd you expect Shep to do, light them for him? Ah, so he did do it, did he? I ain't saying nothing on the grounds that I might incriminate Shep. Why don't you pull that thing off and see what number one at Turkey? Call up the front office, time to pick up Shep Morrison. Where is he, Frosty? Who, Shep Morrison? Yeah, Shep Morrison. He's, uh, out delivering Christmas baskets to the poor. Are those what you had in mind, Mr. Morrison? Yeah, you're getting warmer. I've had a few complaints lately. Have you got anything without so much lace on it? Oh, I have some new Snuggies. Would you like to see them? Yeah, let's have a look at them. <laughs> Never mind, just give me ten dozen of the kind you're wearing. <laughs> Here, send a dozen to each one of these addresses. And throw in a dozen for yourself. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morrison. Okay. The lingerie department. Come on. Come on, Shep. No, take it easy, boys. I haven't finished my Christmas shopping yet. I still got to get something for the chief. Don't be cute. An hour ago, over on Clark Street, we found three stiffs smoking Leonardo da Vinci's. Leonardo da Vinci. Well, whatever it is. There isn't a better cigar made. But why should I do a thing like that? They were pretty Willie's boys. And you and Willie aren't exactly pals, are you? Well, we don't belong to the same lodge. But you're barking up the wrong tree. I've been in this store all afternoon. I've been examining lingerie for the last hour. Have a nice Snuggie. Oh, over an hour. You always have an alibi, haven't you? Yeah, it saves commuting to that rat trap of yours. Well, Merry Christmas, Shep. Sorry to have disturbed you. Make that two dozen for yourself, honey. You wouldn't think to look at him he could kill a man? No, but he can do all right with a woman. He may be a gangster, but he's certainly a valuable customer. I hope you showed him every courtesy. Oh, I think I did all right. Hiya, boss. Bought my present yet? Yeah, I got you all taken care of. Hey, look at that. Down three times now, that's enough. No, not just now. Oh, there she is. I used to be crazy about him. Sometimes I wish I was back in the fifth grade, sliding down him again. I mean the girl. She's got class. That's the kind of a girl you want to take home to your mother. Yeah, when your mother isn't home. You want me to bring her over to place for dinner? No, uh, that's no easy, oh. That's a nice girl. Yeah? Yeah. Will you go over and help him pick up those plots over there? Thank you. How do you know? Get her away from those sandbox and balloons. She's probably a ball of fire. Ah, uh, you're nuts. Anybody can see what she's like. 
That's what I call tasty. How about it, Judy? You ready for a little relief? Am I? Where do these mothers go, anyway? You know, I don't believe they're shopping. I think they just leave their little animals here to keep them out of reform school. <laughs> don't let it get you, dearie. When I took this job, I loved children, but now... Mm. Oh, what kind of a life is this, anyway? I want something to happen. Well, you're in the wrong spot for that kind of action. Mm. Now, I'll get into my whites and take over for a while. Okay. Blow my nose, please. Uh, go ahead and blow. Blow your little brains out, darling. Come on. There you are. Thank you. How do you do, sir? How do you do? May I help you? <laughs> no, thanks. I just like to watch the children play. Oh, well, you've come to a good place for it. Cute, isn't he? At first. He's been doing that all day. Hey, mister, can you fix this? Uh, I'm sorry, Sonny. I don't know a thing about machine guns. I can even change tires on velocipede. <laughs> ah, look at them there, enjoying themselves. Not a care in the world. <laughs> it's relaxing just to watch them. Anybody can see you're not around children very much. Not around them. I'm around them all the time. Really? How many do you have? Oh, not so many. <laughs> Couple. Hey, I wouldn't miss their play hour for anything. Uh, that's the best part about being a man. You can come home, have your play hour with them, and send them to bed. You know, it's not so easy for your wife. Oh, I'm not married. I mean, uh, not anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And I shouldn't have said what I did, because you're probably with them a great deal. Well, not as much as I'd like. I've been kind of busy lately. But uh, I leave most of that up to the butler. Butler? Uh, yeah, that's since the nursemaid left. Oh, well, if you're having any trouble finding a new one, we'd be glad to make recommendations. We have a list of reliable women. Well, that's great. I'll take a look at it some other time. I'll be back again soon. As a matter of fact, I, I might be interested in the job myself. Well, that's nice of you. But uh, I don't think you'd like it. My uh, kids are kind of noisy. Uh, they couldn't be any noisier than this. Oh, but then perhaps you'd prefer someone older. No, no. On the other hand, you're just about right for the job. <laughs> you're hired. Will $50 a week be all right? 50? Well, that's 25 bucks for each kid. Well, thanks. I couldn't turn down an offer like that. I'll send my car for you. My name's Morrison, S.J. Morrison, the uh, banker. I'm Judy Miller. I'll be ready at 6 o'clock, and thank you very much, Mr. Morrison. That's okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Cute little devils, aren't they? <laughs> Anytime his mother wants to check him, it's okay by me. Did he ask you for a date? He's sending his car for me at six. No, where's he gonna take you? Oh, dinner at the Drake, dancing at the Bal Tabran, and then we're going home to decorate his Christmas mm, tree. Wonderful. Uh, it would be if I weren't such a liar. Oh. Nope. All he saw in me was a little mother for his offspring. Well, don't give up. He may take another look. Come on. Is she coming to dinner? She's moving in. Moving in? I guess she wasn't as refined as you thought she was. Frosty, I've got myself in quite a spot. You didn't ask her to marry you? No, no. Then you're okay, because anything short of that's pure sales talk. I'm not as okay as you think. I gotta get myself a couple of kids by six o'clock. I'll be out in ten minutes. Three dying, thank you. Hi, Mr. Morrison. Hi, Red. Big gang killing, three dead, read all the boxes. Hi, Chef.
How'd you like it, Chip? Not bad, Winnie. Well, the audience liked it. When? I thought it was a new number. So it is, but the place has been full of cops all afternoon looking for you. Well, next time make them pay cover charge. Come here, I want to talk to you. How are you at straight dramatic parts? Who, me? I'm superb. I'm just loaded with undiscovered talent. You know, at high school I played Lady Macbeth even. Think you can play a housekeeper? Play it? You think I was one? Well, climb out of those bloomers and I'll get you an audition. An audition? You don't mean it. You better not let me down either. Oh, don't worry. You'll be taking bows all over the place for discovering me. <laughs> Woo! All right, hurry up, you guys. Get that stuff out of here. Well, put that over there. And that goes in that corner. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that's all, Mr. Morrison. Thanks, boys, for bringing it over special. <laughs> it would have broken the kids' hearts if it hadn't gotten here in time. Thanks, Mr. Morrison, and a Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. How does everything look, Quentin? Oh, lovely, sir. What a dirty trick, a straight dramatic part. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, building up a lot of false hopes, making a girl feel she's finally got a break. I've done you favors, Winnie. Yeah, but this ain't one of them. What about the new show tonight? The girls will be lost without me. You'll get there in time for the show. Once she meets you and knows she's properly chaperoned, you can take a powder. Get out of here! Get out of here! Leave me alone! Ow! Save your right! Here it comes. <laughs> right, get in. Hey, boss, this little hyena packs a rod and he's trying to use it on me. That's nothing but a cat pistol. It can't hurt you. It can if you get it across the shins. Come on, take off your hat. Give me that. Hey, he's kind of big, isn't he? I'm big enough. Well, I, I, he, he's the best I can do in such a short notice. You should have seen him before I stuffed him into this new suit. Tell him how many guys you had helping you. Detroit Harry was his old man. Harry? I thought his kid was littler. He was, but that was two years ago when Harry was knocked off. Hey, we're all getting older, boss. Does the kid know who I am? Nah, he lives down on Halsa Street with his aunt, on the pension you've been paying her. She know you got him here? Nah, she's never home. He's crazy about some guy out in Elgin. The kid shifts for himself. Well... Oh, what a character. The kid know I'm supposed to be his old man? He better. I've been rehearsing him ever since I got him. At first I had to twist his arm a little, but now he'll say, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Daddy. To him. Daddy. Smart as a whip. Why didn't you just send that girl a silver fox? You're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. I'm already in trouble. Miss Miller is waiting in the drawing room, sir. We'll be right down. Yes. Here. Comb your hair. That's enough. Well, come on. Hey, by the way, what's your name? Detroit Harry, Junior. But from now on, it's just plain Harry, you get that? Yeah. Yeah what? Yeah, Daddy. Good evening, Miss Miller. Good evening. <laughs> well, here's one of them. The other one's visiting his grandmother. Harry, say hello to the lady. Glad to meet you, Harry. Harry. Hiya, sister. Where's the flesh? It's that uh, public school he's been going to. After vacation, I'm going to put him in a private one. He's been getting kind of fresh lately. Oh, I don't think he's fresh. Harry and I are going to be great friends. Aren't we, Harry? It's possible. Uh, tell Judy what Santa Claus is going to bring you for Christmas. Do I have to listen to that slush? The way I said, those public schools. <laughs> oh, Miss Miller, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Sage. She's our housekeeper. How do you do? You'll have to excuse the way I look. I spent the whole afternoon going over the floor. Uh, Mrs. Sage will show you to your room. Shall I take Harry with me? No, never mind. It's our play hour. Uh, follow me, Miss Miller. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Morrison, you won't mind if I leave a little bit early tonight, will you? I've got a few dolls I want to unwrap for Christmas. Sure, sure. Run along. Harry, I don't like your attitude. You talk like a little mug and you act like a little mug. Well, I ain't no choir boy. You watch your lip around Miss Miller. I didn't like that crack you made to her. Oh, what does she mean handing me that slush? 
She's old enough to know there ain't no Santa Claus. But that's not the point. A kid your age is supposed to believe in Santa Claus. And from now on, you're gonna believe in him. Ah, the whole thing's a racket. I guess there's only one way to convince you. Okay, okay. Have it your own way. And when you see that tree tomorrow morning, you're gonna be surprised, aren't you? That depends on what's under it. That's the sort of talk I don't like. Just the same. I don't go for hobby horses and them teddy bears. You're gonna go for them tomorrow. Okay, okay. But I can see it ain't gonna be much of a Christmas for me. Here, a little higher with this one. Up here, do you think? Yeah, that looks all right. You know, a lot of people like to spend Christmas Eve in nightclubs, watching chorus girls and drinking champagne. But I like to spend it right in my own home, decorating my own tree. There, how does it look now? It's getting better every minute. Hey, boss, I mean, Mr. Marsh, can I see you for a minute? Later, Frosty, we haven't got the tinsel on yet. I think if you ever want to get that tinsel on, you better see me. You go ahead, Miss Miller, I'll be right back. Couple of pretty Willies boys, eh? Yeah, caught them crawling over the wall. I think they was bringing you something. Was there any message to deliver first, or were you just gonna let me have it from behind? Okay, Frosty, get their watches. I'll see that Pretty Willie gets them to remember you by. Open up the cellar, Quentin. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Now, no, Chuck, you can't, not on Christmas Eve. That's right, it is Christmas Eve. Let's buy the boys a drink, Frosty. Merry Christmas, boys. Merry Christmas. All right, get going. Come on, it'll be nice and cool down there. Come on, come on. Well, Quentin, uh, tell Miss Miller I had to uh, dispose of a couple of matters so I can't see her anymore tonight. Very good, sir. Beautiful. Very striking, miss. Oh, I thought it was Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison asked me to convey his regrets. He'll be unable to see you anymore tonight, miss. Oh. Well, I suppose if we don't all go to bed, Santa Claus will never come. Oh, Mr. Morrison hasn't retired, miss. Two of his business associates dropped in, and he had to deal with them. Oh, that wasn't very thoughtful of them, was it? No, miss. I thought Mr. Morrison seemed rather nettled. Good night, miss. Good night. Building. Yes, so what? Well, what'll we build next? Look, I'll stop if you will. This has been gone on all day. But Harry, I thought you were having fun. I never saw anybody as excited as you were this morning. It was be excited or else. Now, Harry, I think your father did everything he could to give you a nice day. Well, we better clean up this mess. He'll be here soon to have his play hour with you. That's not the treat you think it is. How was Christmas? Oh, fine. We missed you at the tree. I slept late. I had an awful night. Oh. I kept dreaming I was singing at the Gold Coast Cafe. <laughs> yes, I've dreamed that too. Only I wasn't asleep. You know, that's what I came to Chicago for. Wanted to be a singer. What happened? Just didn't get a chance. With what you've got, my dear, there ought to be plenty of opportunities. 
Uh, you don't know what it is to come to a big city from a little hick town. You don't know anybody, you haven't any friends. You don't even have any enemies. Am I boring you? A little, but you've got a sweet voice. Go on. Well, for the first month, I just looked for a job. It's pretty tough. You know, I think the worst part about it was that I was lonely. A couple of times I went down to the station, I was going to go home. Then the last minute I changed my mind. Oh, I tried everything. Then finally I got that nursery job. I loved it at first, and then it got me. What do you mean? Well, did you ever spend all day blowing little girls' noses while little boys beat on drums? No, I hate drums. <laughs> I used to go down that slide till I was dizzy. Then when Mr. Morrison came along, it seemed like an answer to a prayer. Maybe it is. You know, I've got a feeling that Mr. Morrison is a little bit interested in you. I think he's terribly attractive. He's not like anyone I've ever known before. The more you find out about him, the more surprised you're going to be. He seems so kind and gentlemanly. He certainly is devoted to Harry. Oh, he's an ideal father. There's nothing I like better than to watch him scuffling with his son. you worked for Mr. Morrison a long time, haven't you? Mr. Morrison broke me in. I came here as a child. What was his wife like? Well, that's hard to say. She was sort of elfin. A lot of the time, you weren't quite sure she was there. What happened? Well, one day she wasn't. Uh, she just sort of melted away. Hello, Mr. Sage. Hello, Miss Miller. <laughs> well, hello, kid. You want to play? Yeah, sure. Hey, this is great, the Woolworth building. Ah, look here, Harry. We can even build a Holland Tunnel. Would you like that? I can hardly wait. Okay. Oh. <laughs> ah, this thing's all right. Elevator and everything, eh? Now, isn't that cute? Pretty willy. What do you want, Willie? I want to talk over a little business with you. Okay, I don't usually talk business at home, but when I do, it's in the library. This is no time to ask questions. A smart rat always leaves a ship before it sinks. What do you mean? You might as well know. You're not working for any banker. You're working for Shep Morrison, the boss of the South Side. Shep Morrison? Shep Morrison. The whole town is paying off to him. He's got them trembling so they practically shake themselves down. But pretty Willie don't tremble as easy as he ought to. I think we'd better take a nice brisk walk. Go ahead. I'm staying here with Harry. You don't understand. That's no board meeting going on in there. I don't care. I'm not running away. Well, I am. I'm as yellow as they come. Cigar, boys? How they use them? I don't smoke. How about you, Willie? Sure, sure. Leonardo da Vinci, eh? A couple of my boys were smoking them yesterday. Light? Uh, yeah, I, I don't like them cold. Sit down, boys. No, this won't take very long. Boys must have forgot to wind their watches. They both run down. Those were careless boys. Those were good boys. I liked them. This is a big town, Willie. But somehow we always seem to be crowding each other. Yeah, I know. It's pathetic. It's a waste of manpower, too. I got plenty of manpower. But it isn't efficient. If we didn't have to watch each other so close, we could spend a lot more time on business. After today, 
I won't have to spend much time watching you. You won't if you're smart. What do you mean by that? I mean this battling isn't getting us anywhere. Suppose you rub me out. Then Frosty has to rub you out. Then somebody else gets Frosty, then one of my boys evens it up again. We're suckers not to get together. The Chicago River isn't very pretty, but it makes a swell boundary. Suppose you stay north and I stay south. You figure that'll cut your cigar bill down some? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I don't like that quiet. What do you suppose they're doing? Maybe they've got to top on each other and don't dare move. You know, if we'd thought up this truce a couple of days ago, I wouldn't have been lugging these extra watches around. <laughs> I had it on my mind for some time, but I never got around to suggesting it. <laughs> None of that, Quentin. <laughs> Just show the boys out. Oh. Very good, sir. Right this way, gentlemen. But first, would you mind telling me just how you got in? It's a trade secret. Uh, we're not at liberty to divulge it. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. How'd you like to introduce us? Why bother? You're gonna stay north of the river. Now, what kind of a truce is this? Strictly business. <laughs> okay. Anytime you see me on the south side, it'll be strictly social. <laughs> Can't even get away from business on Christmas. I hope you weren't scared. Those uh, bank messengers are mighty quick on the draw. I think it was a pretty rotten trick. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're Chef Morrison. Yeah. I guess it was in the cards for you to find out eventually. It was very cute of you to get me to quit my job. Tell me I was going to work for a banker. You know, it's going to be wonderful reference to tell people that my last employer was Chef Morrison, a gangster. Well, you don't have to tell anybody anything. You still got a job. Do you think I'd go on working for you? Well, now, look, I know I'm no pillar of society, but I'm not as bad as you think. You couldn't be. Now, wait a minute. You got to listen to me. A few years ago, I was just a peaceful guy like anybody else, running a dairy lunch and selling a little pound of stuff on the side. Then they started shoving me around. I found out the only way I could make them stop was to shove back a little harder. Well, pretty soon I got so good at shoving, I found myself in charge of it. But that still don't mean I like it. Then why didn't you quit? Well, uh, that's not so easy once you're in. I can't quit. Fortunately, I can. Gee, I wouldn't have said all those things I did if I'd known who you was. From now on, I'm gonna be proud to call you my own man. <laughs> Do you mean to say you're not even Harry's father? I guess not. Well, you ought to know, hadn't you? Look. I'll be honest with you. Yesterday, when I saw you at that store, I really wanted to ask you for dinner. But while I was casing you, we started talking about kids, and the first thing I knew, I was a father. <laughs> well, from there on in, I had to live up to it. You lied yourself into this just to get me to go out with you? Yeah. But you ought to be flattered. If I hadn't liked you so much, I wouldn't have bothered. I am flattered, Mr. Morrison. But goodbye. So you're going to walk out on me, huh? Why shouldn't I? You don't need a nursemaid, and you haven't any children. Why, sure I have. Now that I've got used to Harry and we sort of understand each other, I'm going to keep him around here. Don't make up your mind now. Let's talk about it at dinner. Let me take you down to the Gold Coast. Oh, well, I... That's great. All right. But it's only because it's Christmas. Hot dog! I always wanted to go to a classy joint. You're going to bed like a kid ought to. What do you mean? After what you said, I thought I was going to be one of the gang. Well, you're not big enough yet. If you go to bed and grow a little more, maybe later on I'll take you in. Thanks, Chef. I'll grow as fast as I can. I I'll cut out smoking. Uh, don't quit all at once. Maybe you better taper off easy. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Harry. Hey, Pop, do I have to 
to sleep with all them teddy bears now, do I? No, forget it. Gee, thanks. He's a swell guy. Hey, boss, you know those two guys Pretty Willie sent over last night? You mean the ones we killed? Yeah, one of them has a sore throat. Think we ought to have it sprayed? Let's go down and take a look at him. Three hearts. Four diamonds. How long you been here? They got me St. Valentine's Day. Four spades. Pass. Well, how come you ain't paler? I never miss a day under that sun lamp. Right. Hey, be careful, boss. That third step's loose. A guy could get killed going down there. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Hiya, boys. Hi, Hi, Hi Chef. Who's got a sore throat? Me. Give me that thing. Open your mouth and say, ah. Uh, Ah, ah. Yeah, you ought to have your tonsils out. That's what they keep telling me. But I'm afraid it'll hurt. Well, stay out of drafts. I'll send you down some goggle. Thanks. Hey, Chef, how long are you going to keep us here? Permanent. You're dead. Am I glad I didn't pay cash for that radio? <laughs> you feeling OK? Oh, me? Oh, fine, fine. Good. Hey, Frosty. What do you want? I wish you'd arrange to rub out my wife. I'm kind of lonesome. Your wife? Ain't there enough lemons on that slot machine? Anyway, Biff, it can't be done, because we'd have to rub out wise for the other guys. It would get out of hand. Say, you ought to tell a guy what's down here. Coming down them steps last night, I like to die to fright. <laughs> you would have been our first casualty. Shep's got a record of ten killings and no blood spill. Yeah. Yeah. What about those boys who was knocked over in that cigar store yesterday? Can we help out if the cops blame us for every killing that comes along? Just because they were smoking Da Vinci's? Sure has made a lot of people afraid of Shep. Smoke, boys? No, thanks. Uh, dead for the throat. Thanks. Smoke them after dinner. We're having a blue plate special. So long, boys. So long. Oh, hey, and you, don't breathe those other guys' faces with that sore throat of yours. You're contagious. I never thought Chip Morrison was such a dope. He ain't no dope. He's smart. If they pin a killing on him, he can produce the corpse still breathing. Yeah, I never thought of that. And in the meantime, if anybody cramps his style, he just locks him up. Makes it nicer for everybody, don't it? Yeah. Bonsoir, Monsieur Morrison. Bonsoir, Henri. Bonsoir, Mademoiselle. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I imported him right from France. Good evening, Chef. Good evening, John. Ex Governor Logan. I used to see a lot of him before he got himself impeached. Excuse me, will you? Did you get that for Christmas, Mr. Morrison? I already had the coat, but I found the rest of it in my stocking. <laughs> I'll bet it looked cute there. You said it, honey. I don't know whether to take you in or not. Nobody will look at the floor show. Bonsoir, Monsieur Morrison. This way, s'il vous plaît. Did you import him, too? No, uh, correspondence school. <laughs> well, how do you like my place? Oh, I get much better at night when it's full of people. I don't get you. I sat here three days when I first came to Chicago. I wanted to get a job singing, but the stage manager wouldn't see me. Why, well, I'll fire him tomorrow. Oh, I wouldn't do that. He can't see every stage-struck girl who comes to town. Well, I don't blame him for not seeing the others, but any guy who pass up somebody like you ought to be fired. We'll take care of that. Come on. What are you going to do? You're on next. Now? Sure, well, you're still young and in good voice. Oh, but I couldn't. I'm not dressed for it. Well, you will be. Come on. Oh, but it really Come on. Is. Hiya, girls. Thanks for the lovely teddy, Chef. Okay. You sent mine to the old address. I didn't get them until today. Oh, that's too bad. I like to give them pretty things so they won't be subject to temptation. Opal, what have you got for Miss Miller to wear? What's she going to do? Well, what difference does it make? I want her to look good. We got that long black evening gown that drops off ruffle by ruffle. Yeah, she's going to sing. Why didn't you tell me that? Is that all there is to it? There's a muff that goes with it. That's great. Then if your number doesn't go over, nobody will be disappointed. Hurry up and get it on, will you, honey? 
All you girls have a nice Christmas? Well, yeah. You still going with the same Santa Claus you went with last year, Marie? <laughs> Hello. I was worried about you this afternoon. You know, I thought Pretty Willie was going to rub you out like a pencil mark. Why would he do that? He's my best friend. <laughs> You must be hard up for friends. Just remember, that kind don't rattle first. Yeah, yeah, look. The kid's gonna do a number. As soon as she gets into a costume, I want you to give her a send-off to the customers. What do you want me to do, tell them the truth? Tell them she comes direct from New York and London. Hmm. What does she do, trapeze? No, she saws fresh dames like you in half. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Well, stay that way. <laughs> Folks, I don't know how we did it, but by blackmailing two ambassadors and putting a little tiny bit of pressure on the Department of Agriculture, we managed to bring you direct from London and New York, the darling of three continents, little Judy Miller. Give the little girl a big hand. <laughs> Great, kid. Congratulations. Well, you got yourself a job. From now on, you're working here. Really? Oh, I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Morrison. You don't have to thank me. I'm giving it to you because you're good, and not because I go for it. Who'll take care of Harry? I'll send him to a reform school. I mean, a military school. <laughs> a little discipline won't hurt him. No, I'm sure he'll love the gun. Come on, honey, give him another one. We've got a house full of all-night suckers. <laughs> She was going to lay an egg, yeah? How did I know she had talent with all those clothes on? What's left? Hey. Well, Captain, I'm leaving him in your hands. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Morrison. We'll make a man out of your son. Well, goodbye, kid. Don't forget what you promised about staying in line. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you going to kiss me goodbye, Harry? You bet! I may not see another dame for months. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, Morrison, report to the quartermaster. Right through that door. Sure. Sir! Sure, sir. What are you looking at? Uh, look. He's a funny kid. He's never had a break, so take it a little easy with him, will you? He'll get every consideration, you may be assured, sir. But not too easy. If he gets tough, you've got to slot him down. We can take care of it, I'm sure. We've had uh, spirited boys here before. And while we don't believe in breaking the spirit, we know how to bend and direct it. Well, just don't bend it too far. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Morrison. Goodbye, Miss Miller. Goodbye. I told you to report to the quartermaster. You'll be late for drill. Let's get this straight, Napoleon. I don't mind working these machine guns, but sweating out there with them monkeys is out.
You know, I can't make up my mind about you. You're kind-hearted, thoughtful. Not at all what people say you are. I told you I wasn't as bad as you thought. You certainly are nice to Harry. You know, you couldn't be any nicer if he were your own son. You mean you're beginning to approve of me? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. How far would you go? I think we've gone far enough. <laughs> okay, we'll take it up later, after you get to know me better. Hey, stop at the cemetery in Cicero. I've been meaning to put flowers on John Lindsay all week. Oh, hello, Annie. Hello, honey. How does it feel to be Cinderella? Oh, it's wonderful. I've never been happy in all my life. How do you think you'll like it at midnight when all the white horses turn into rats? I don't quite understand you, Winnie. I mean, this can't last forever. At first, I thought you were using Shep for a stepladder, but now I see it's more than that. Well, what if it is? That's what's not so good. Oh, I can understand it, honey. He's a nice guy, a good-looking guy. But anybody in his line of business is only here temporarily. Shep knows what he's doing. He can take care of himself. His back's just as good a target as the others. Look here. I like you, and I've been in circulation longer than you have. I've seen them come and go. Take Eddie Torrio. He was tops. He was bigger than Shep, even. But in three years, he wound up splattered all over a garage wall. I can name you ten. The only difference is the setting for the last act. Oh, stop talking like that. It happened to my own husband. He was in the rackets. Six months ago, Biff tangled up with Shep's mob, and that was the end of him. That's how I got the job here. Shep felt sorry for me. Shep killed your husband? Oh, he didn't do it personally. Confidentially, Biff was a worm. He deserved all he got. Of course, I wouldn't want Shep to know that because he might take me off the payroll. Do you think I like it that Shep's a gangster? But what are you going to do when you care for someone? You walk out on him. You find some nice guy who works in a bank for 40 bucks a week and is afraid of guns. I couldn't walk out on Shep. No? Well, don't say I didn't tell you when I'm saying I told you so. Think it over. Shep is up there now because he's got them all scared to death. But someday, one of them will stop shivering long enough to point a cannon at him. They're just a pack of wolves waiting to close in. Oh, we were just talking about you. You want it outside. Who wants me outside? I do. Oh. Don't turn your back on him, dearie. You remember me, don't you, cutie? Yes, I remember you. I saw you at town tonight. In fact, I saw it every night this week. Don't you like the show over at your own place? I'd like it better if you were in it. What do you say? I'll give you double whatever Shep's paying you. You must be hard up for entertainers. Well, not precisely. Anytime you want to leave, I can spare you. And can't I just stick around and button your dress or hold your coat or shine your shoes? I'm crazy about you. I can put on my own coat, thanks. But I'll leave my shoes outside the door. Ah, oh, come on. Be a sport. I'll flip you for it. I'm disappointed, Willie. I thought you'd been coming around just because the food was good. That's it. You got a jelly roll here that can't be topped. I'll give you the recipe. Then you won't have to come clear across town all the time. Oh, I don't mind coming across town. There's a new rule here. No service in the dressing rooms. It's all taken care of outside at the tables. Well, that's just for customers. Partners ought to have special privileges. You haven't forgotten we're partners, have you? Not for a minute. I uh, keep remembering you're supposed to be taking care of the north side. Well, what difference does it make who's on whose side? She's right, Shep. Now, why should we always be talking business? We ought to have more social contacts. In fact, I came over to invite you both to a party I'm giving tomorrow night. You should have asked me earlier. I'm giving a party myself tomorrow night. Well, that's great. I'll cancel mine and come to yours. Uh, that'll be fine. Don't mind if I bring a few friends, do you? No. Uh, the more, the merrier. I can give my party later and have you all over. That way, we can trade off every week. It'll be sort of like belonging to the same country club. See you tomorrow night. Good night. What did you do that for? Don't be angry, Shep. Why shouldn't I be? You looking for chances to see that guy? Oh, it's not that at all. It's just that I don't see why you should go out of your way to have trouble with him. I'll take care of him. You just tend to your singing. Just that I, I get so frightened when I think what might happen. I don't want to see you lined up against any garage wall. Who's been talking to you? What's happened to others? 
I couldn't stand it if it happened to you. I never knew you liked me quite that much. I tried not to. I hate what you are, but it just doesn't seem to make any difference anymore. If I thought a girl like you would marry a guy like me, I'd ask you. Then I will. But go ahead and ask. I'm asking. I'm accepting. Oh, Winnie, we're engaged to be married. Congratulations. I suggest you hold your anniversaries every month. <laughs> <laughs> so much as bleeding in a bottle. And another thing, I ordered two drinks. I didn't know you wanted them both at the same time. I told you I was a two-fisted drinker, didn't I? It amounts to the same thing. He pours half of them down his shirt. Oh, hello, Winnie. Hiya, baby. Something's following you. Huh? Oh, Frosty, I want you to meet my new husband, Alfredo Herrara. Senor, to meet you, it is to be ecstatic with pleasure. I feel kind of wacky myself. <laughs> Draw up a stool and sit down. <laughs> Must have been a love at first sight. It was. We were crowded together in an elevator. By the time we got to the 24th floor, we were engaged. was suddenly taken ill. Influenza, sir? No, no. He happened to be fooling around with some cement, and he fell into a block of it. And while we were trying to get him out, it fell in the lake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> May I take your thing? You bet, sir. Yeah. You may leave everything, gentlemen. I've been to parties before, Quentin. Come on, let's go. Hi, Willie. Uh, Mike. Uh, By the party. had me worried. I thought you were going to pass us up. How could I? My social secretary has this down in my date book in red ink. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Hi. How do you do? Hey, uh, how's about somebody to dance with about Miss Miller's size? What's wrong with me? I'll pass that. I'm a gentleman. By the way, Willie, you can't be the first to know, but you can be the 500th. We're engaged. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Nobody but an expert would notice the shadow in it. And how many jewelers do you knock around with, anyhow? <laughs> <laughs> well, the way I look at it, it's the spirit of the thing that comes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Circulate around, boys and girls. If you see anything you want, help yourselves. Everything's insured. <laughs> Come on, Willie, let's dance. Baby, slip me that bracelet you're wearing. Oh, no, you don't. I know what you're thinking. Slip it to me or I'll knock you out from under that permanent. But, Willie, you just gave it to me. I only had it a month. You don't want to wear it out, do you? Hand it over. I won't. I never take it off, not even in my bath. Oh, Willie, you're hurting. When I cut in on Miss Miller, you start dancing with Shep and glom onto him. 
But you're supposed to dance the first dance with the girl you brought. Oh, you got it wrong. It's the last dance. I don't blame you for hanging on to a chef, but can't you spare one dance? Uh, there's nothing I'd like better, but you came late and her card's full. Yeah, but you could talk the orchestra leader into playing an extra. Well, now, I'd rather not, Willie, seeing how him and his boys hate music. Come on, honey. But you could finish this dance with me, if you like. Well, now, that's the solution to everything. Now, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> Should we dance, Chef? You're like a feather in my arms. I'd like to dust myself off with you regular. Mm, you need dusting off, but not with a feather. That's what I like about you. You got fire. How about carrying that torch for me, too? From a distance, nobody knows whether it was for me or for Chef. Look, Willie, we're not engaged for the fun of it. We're going to be married. With me, it'd be for fun. Well, that reminds me. I got something for you. You dance like a professional. So do you. Just a little token of my esteem. No, thanks, Willie. I don't want it. Oh, come on. There you are. You've got to admit, it tops that ring. Not for long, it won't. Just a little engagement present for the kids, Shep. I'm sending you some neckties. Shep, I... Run along, honey. I've been trying to get over to you in a nice way. That's my girl. Now I'll make it plainer. Lay off. You're putting an awful strain on our partnership, Shep. Lay off or I'll put a strain on you that'll crack you wide open. I'm through kidding with you, Willie. You get offside once more and you'll end up smoking one of my cold cigars. Okay, Shep. Okay. Don't get yourself all waked up. I didn't mean anything. I do. You got the wrong angle on this, Shep. Uh, I just figured that you and me being partners, I, I could kind of clown around a little. Still partners, ain't it? As long as you keep your nose clean, it is. Shh, shh. Follow me, follow me. Where? What's the trouble? The location is the kitchen, and you'll see what the trouble is. That's the trouble I was telling you about. Why aren't you in school, Harry? Yeah, that place, I'm through with it. What happened? They turned the heat on me just when I had everything organized, too. I think you better tell me everything, Harry. All I did was start a protection agency. I was getting 10% of all the kids' money from home. <laughs> well, where did you ever get that idea? Well, Shep does it, don't he? It was going great until someone squealed. That's when they arrested me. Arrested? Yeah, I thought I could square a rap by offering a split with the commandant instead he took my shirrings off. Oh, Harry, that's terrible. Did they send you home? Nah, they confined me to quarters. Well, how'd you get out then? The honor system. The windows weren't even barred. I hung on all the officers' day and cleared out. Did he, did he know who hit him? He didn't know who or what. Well, that's good. Because if you had to hit him, that was the way to do it. You shouldn't have done that, Harry. You were sent up there to learn how to be an officer and a gentleman. What do I want to be a gentleman for? I'm going to join Shep's gang. Learning how to bow from the waist won't help you when a bunch of gorillas are closing in. Stop talking that way. Now, you go upstairs to bed. I'll talk to Shep about you in the morning. OK, OK, OK. But don't dream any dreams about sending me back to that school. There's a little matter of the commandant's dog I ain't told you about yet. Well, Frosty is worse than he ever was. No, he's only a kid. He'll outgrow it. Oh, then what can you expect? He's just copying ship. 
Oh, I've tried to close my eyes and forget about it, but it's no use. Shep's a gangster and a killer. I love him, but I'll, I'll never be happy with him. Now, don't go crying and ruining your mascara. Shep Morrison's a great guy. He never hurt nobody his whole life. Oh, Prof, how can you say that? Everybody knows what Shep is. Oh, no, they don't. No, they don't. If you knew what I know, then you'd really know. Shep Morrison never killed nobody. What do you think of that? I think you're drunk. Oh, I'm drunk. I'm, I'm drunk. I'll show you how drunk I am. Come on with me. Don't be afraid. Come over here. Come over here. You stay right there. I'll open the door. I'll press a button. And I'll prove it with my own eyes. Now watch out for that third step. Third step got me. I saw him push you, Frosty. Yeah, and he had a knife. <laughs> hey. They rubbed out a dam. Come here, I'll show you. There they are. All Shep's victims, alive and well. Most of them gained weight since they've been here. You mean he he's never killed anybody? No. Then the stories about him aren't true? No, he's, he's the kindest hearted guy in the world. Shep wouldn't kill a grasshopper. Frosty, that's wonderful. Oh, I've never been so happy in my life. Go on, Frosty. Kiss her back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. How about me, honey? Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, come on. 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 Come on,
You know, in a way, I kind of hate to do this. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if you called the whole thing off. No, no. You're too smart to stay alive. When a guy can think as good as you do, he's got to go. All right, Chick, you can stop anywhere in here. This is the end of the line, ship. All right, boys. Better take this along, Louis. It's your brand, Shep, Leonardo da Vinci. You won't need any matches. Take care of him, boys, before he catches cold. out here. We ought to come out sometime in the summer for a picnic. You gave us a break in that basement of your ship. Now we're giving you one. Hey. Hey, you shot a hen. Hens don't fly at night. That's a yowl. Thanks, boys. Okay, but remember, you're dead. Come on, Louie. Keep out of sight, Shep. The next time, there won't be no yowl to take the rap for you. How'd he take it? Did he crawl? Yeah, he got down on his knees and blubbered all over the place. I knew he'd weasel at the last minute. The first time we shot him, he ran in the bushes. I had to follow him and give it to him again. You sure you got him? Yeah, sure. After the second one, he flopped over like a dead yowl. Anybody with you? No. Please come to the door. It's important. Mrs. Matheson on the third floor wants you to come up and look at her husband. Why should I want to look at him? He's got pains. He's calling for a doctor. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I told you I was on a vacation. I, I don't want to see no sick people. I told her that. But being right in the building with the pains running up one side and down the other, I mean of her husband. I tell you, I can't do a thing. I've been debarred. Maybe he's got appendicitis. What can I do? Take it out with a salad fork? And besides, the Medical Association locked up all my tools. Glory be. Who's there? Who's there? It's me, the landlady. How many times do I have to tell you I'm resting? But there's a friend of yours here to see you, doctor. I, I ain't got no friends. Tell them to go away. Now, wait a minute, buddy. Don't go off half cocked. I, I look like Frosty Welch, but it ain't nothing but a coincidence. I... Oh. Boss, didn't they get you? Sure they did. I've been dead three days. You're kidding, ain't you? Willie made the mistake of picking a couple of the boys from the cellar to rock me to sleep. Where's Judy? I don't know, boss. Right after Quentin let us out of the cellar, I scrammed. Every torpedo man in the loop's been looking for me. I waited outside her house last night till it was dark, then I went upstairs, but she wasn't there. And I called the school. I said I was Harry's uncle from Eureka. I thought she might be with him, but even Harry was gone. Yeah, they, they probably blew town together. And I don't blame her for disappearing the way Willie was breathing down her neck. I never wanted to kill a guy before, but so help me pretty Willie's got it coming to him. Oh, boss, you can't do a thing like that. You never have and you can't start now. 
frosty. I want you to go down to the morgue. Oh, don't, not me. No, I'm allergic to morgues. Now, get this. You're looking for a friend. Stick around until they bring in somebody around my size that can't be recognized. And plant this on them. And this. Oh, well, wait a minute. They'll think it's you. Yeah. Boss, I'm in the dark. Lighten me up. Get out of that burlap. Put your clothes on. Pretty Willie must have rubbed out at least 40 guys, and he's never even had his wrist slapped. I think it's about time they got slapped. I get it. I get it. I think it would be an awfully funny joke if Pretty Willie took the rap for the one murder he didn't commit. You think? <laughs> He'll die laughing. Hey, boss, this wallet's full of dough. You wouldn't want people to think Chet Morrison died broke, would you? No, but you could get the same impression with a couple of bum checks. Go on, get going. Hey, boss, if I ain't back in two hours, you better come down and identify me. Dr. Kildare, physician and sturgeon. Shep Morrison's body identified. Gangster died violent death. Shep Morrison has been rubbed out, it was learned today. The body was highly recognizable, but the identification was conclusive when authorities found a valuable ring of the gangsters on a dead man's finger and a wallet in his coat pocket. <laughs> Although suspicion pointed strongly toward Pretty Willie Williams, Morris's gangland rival, a possible robbery motive was hinted when the wallet was found... Empty. <laughs> yeah, empty. I knew that guy on the next slab was a pickpocket. Where is it? Where's what? Come on, where is it? Well, if I didn't take it, he would have. Go on, go on. Williams is due to be grilled again by the district attorney. When interviewed, Pretty Willie told reporters, I'm too caught up to say a thing. I'm up to my neck in arrangements for burying my old pal. How do you like that nerve? That guy will twist out of this yet if we don't stop him. Not this time, Frosty. What are you going to do? Well, the least a guy can do is attend his own funeral. Who do you suppose is in this icebox? Shut up. Willie he might hear you. I was just thinking it might be somebody we know. Poor Shep. He was a good guy, even if he did bump you off. Yeah. Was my funeral as nice as this one? No, but I did the best I could with the two bits you left me. How much did the casket cost you, Willie? $2,840. I suppose you get a wholesale rate, eh, Willie? Ain't nothing sacred to you reporters. Hello, Willie. Hello, Charles. The district attorney wants to see you and your boys again. Now, why does he have to disturb me and my grief? Well, he figured you were about all cried out by now. Well, tell him we'll be down as soon as we can pull ourselves together. Do you mind if I go along with you? You know, I'm just nuts about parades. I'd still like to know who's in that icebox. Yeah, no. Hey, you jerk. The funeral went that way. I know it. I'm all out of gas. Well, hurry up and get some. We'll miss all the blow-off. First day I'm grown up, I'm gonna go pulling on a pretty woolly guy. Don't take it so hard. He was no good anyway. I can't believe it. It's too good to be true. It's true, all right, but it won't be if we spend any more time around here. Here's some railroad tickets. We'll be at the station at 9.30 tonight. Oh, can't we go away now? Well, I've got a few odds and ends to take care of, but don't worry, honey, I'll be there. Please be careful. Listen, fella, why don't you try and be a little more... Frosty, shall I fill the tank, sir, or do you just want enough gas to get to the cemetery? Shep, what are you doing in town? You promised to stay out of sight. If Pretty Willie finds out we didn't knock you off, there'll be nothing phony about our funerals. Yeah, Pretty Willie'd be mad, all right, wouldn't he? 
But if you boys will cooperate with me, it won't make any difference how mad he gets. Oh, now look, Shep, we've done you a favor once. Why don't you just go in and leave us alone? Well, I figure one good turn deserves another. What do you mean by that? I mean I want you boys to do me another good turn. Oh, we're busy, Shep. Yeah, awful busy. You got no idea. Okay, boys, then in that case, I don't see how I can keep Pretty Willie from finding out I'm still alive. Oh, now, wait a minute, Shep. Don't go. We gotta play ball with him. He's got all the aces. All right. But that goes to show you, when you're told to kill a guy, you ought to do it. Like I say, Shep and me were pals. His passing leaves me grief-struck. Yes, I know all about you being fraternity brothers. But you were seen driving off with him in the car. And the next thing, he turns up in the morgue. Yeah, I know. I warned him not to go walking out there in the woods alone. I had a sort of premonition. But you can't prove a thing. And I suppose you boys don't know anything about it. Yeah, we do. He done it. Well, you dirty double-crossing rat, I'll take hey, care of you for this. Now, now. Lock him up, boys. Lock me up, boy, you dumb slug. You think I'll stay locked up? I got friends in this town. I got influence. I'll be sprung out of your clink before you can close the door. Sure, you got influence, Willie, but you're not going to be sprung. I'm going to send you out of town and keep you in storage until the trial. And nobody's going to know where you are but me. You can't do it. It ain't legal. Your respect for the law is a little tardy. All right. Take your paws off me. You spoil my crease. Expert, right on gang chief. Pretty Willie Williams takes rat for rat for rat for rat. For rat. Tidal wave washes out 5,000 Japs. Paper, lady? No, thanks. Paper, mister? Oh, you should have been here 15 minutes ago. I shouldn't ever let him out of my sight. If anything happens to him, I'll never forgive myself. Is Judy here? Yeah, she's right over there at the information desk. Come on. Boston. Tell her I'll be along in a minute. Oh, boss, please, don't get in any trouble, will you? Trouble? I'm just gonna comb my hair. Not a ghost, but that isn't your fault. Uh, but you were buried. That wasn't me. Just a reasonable facsimile. So I'm oh, sorry about that little misunderstanding we had, Shep. I, I was sorry about it right after it happened, but now you're alive. Well, everything's all right again. We'll be partners again, eh? The joke's on the DA now. He can't put a thing on me. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong, Willie. The joke's right where it was a minute ago. What do you mean? I'm dead, Willie. You knocked me off like you did 40 other guys. I'm dead and you gave me a big funeral. Why, well, you were one of my pallbearers. Stop kidding, Willie Shep. I, I told you how sorry I was. Oh, I owe you a lot, Willie. From now on, I'm just beginning to live. But I just wanted to let you know how things really were before I disappeared. To give you something to think about for the next 99 years. No, no, Shep, wait, you can't let me take the rock for something I didn't do. Hey, Shep, wait, Shep, don't go! Shep, wait a minute, will you? Don't, don't let him get away! What's this wait. all about? What's this noise about, it's huh? It's Shep Morrison. He's right out there. Don't let him get away! Ah, uh, you're off your nut. It's haunting you already. You dumb flat foot, I tell you, I saw Shep Morrison right where you were standing. Lots of killers are like you. They're victims on their minds day and night. What makes it so bad, you guys always knock off people you can't stand. Oh, listen. Please, ma'am, we about ready to leave. This train don't wait for nobody, ma'am. Keep your shirt on, Uncle Tom. Here he comes. Oh. Well, boss, did you get your hair combed? Nah, there was a guy hugging the mirror, so I just ran my fingers through my curls. This here train's gonna leave. Well, goodbye, Frosty. Well, I... goodbye. 
goodbye, kid. Goodbye? What do you mean, giving me the goodbye? I was told I was going. Sure, yeah, you're coming on the next section with Frosty. Well, what's wrong with this one? Well, you don't seem to understand. We're on a honeymoon. We're picking up a minister at Crown Point. Well, ain't I big enough to go on a honeymoon? Ordinarily, I'd say no, but in your case, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, honey. Meet you in Rio. So long. I can see right now that dame's gonna come between us. Yeah, don't worry, kid, you still have me. I'd rather have smallpox. Oh, darling, we're actually moving, leaving town. I never thought we'd make it. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. You're not only marrying a dead man, you're marrying a broke one. I haven't got a dime. Oh, that's all right. We'll start all over in Brazil and raise nuts or something. <laughs> Here we are. We're going to have to stay out of sight in here until we get to New York. Okay, sweetheart. I hope you brought a deck of cards. <laughs>